Once you've mastered Excel functions and you start to build longer and more complex Excel formulas, you're likely to run into two problems. One is that you have mistakes in your formulas, but because they're so long and complex, you can't find where the problem is. And two, the result of your formula throws an error for some cells, but not for the others, and you're not sure why. Now in this lecture, I'm gonna give you a guide of the audit tools that are available and how they can help you track and debug your formulas. Let's assume you get this file from your colleague. So you open it and you try to make sense of it. The first thing I would try to do is maybe to try to find out where are the formulas here and what they are. I would go to the formulas tab. Under formula auditing tools, you have something called show formulas. It's basically just a toggle button. You can turn it on and off. And here I can quickly have an overview of the type of formulas that are used. So I know these are a bunch of ifs, there's a sum, and that's just this cell multiplied by that one. Then I can turn it off. If I want to analyze the relationship between the cells, so for example, if I want to say which cell is feeding this and which cell is dependent on this, I can use the trace precedence and trace dependence features here. So if I will click on trace precedence, I can see this range is feeding this. And if I click on trace dependence, I can see that this one is dependent on this number. It kind of gives you an overview of the dependency role the cells play. You can remove the arrows by just clicking this. If there were some errors in this file, I could use the error checking feature here to get a bit more information on the type of error. Here I don't have any errors, but let's go to this sheet, which we cover later in one of our functions. You can see I have two different types of error. So if I will click on this, and I click on error checking, I see the formula here. I can see a description of this error, which could help me. It says a value used in the formula is of the wrong data type. What I'm doing is this one divided by this. So this is the wrong data type. So it could help me find out why I have an error here. If I would then go to this one, the formula is dividing by zero or empty cells, and that's true. So this error checking feature can come in handy. Another one that can come in handy is the watch window. The watch window is great for people who work with bigger files and who work with cells that are dependent on other formulas in other worksheets. So for example, in this case, the revenue is basically just this quantity multiplied by the average price that I've typed here. But if, for example, this average price was being derived from another sheet, let's do it as the average. Let's go to here. I think I have price, yes. So now this cell is actually dependent on this, and this one is dependent on this sheet. If I want to kind of watch this cell and watch the value of this cell, what I can do is to watch this cell in the watch window. Add watch. It tells me if I want to add a watch here, you just say add. Here I can see my Excel workbook sheet, the cell and the value in the cell. So if I go to F4 now, so this is kind of a window that comes with you, wherever you move, you can make it smaller or bigger if you want. Keep your eye on this value. I'm going to change this to, let's say, 200. You see this value changes. I don't need to go back here and have a look. I can stay here and look at my cell. And it also works across workbooks. So if you have formulas that are linked to other workbooks, you can always take your watch window with you to the other workbooks and watch the cell that you want to keep an eye on.
You can also use it on multiple cells. So let's say if I wanted to watch these, I can highlight that and say add watch. It creates a watch window for each separate one. If I want to delete them, I just like click on the one I want to delete and say delete watch, or I hold shift down and go down and delete watch here. And you can close the watch window. Next is the evaluate formula feature. Now this can be very helpful when you have bigger formulas. Now I haven't put any bigger formulas yet because we're gonna learn them in the next section, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it here. You're going to appreciate it more, though, when you work with more complex formulas. What it does, it helps you debug your formulas if you get stuck. So it's kind of like stepping into your formula and translating it for you, kind of showing it to you in slow motion. Evaluate. And you see it changes my cell reference to the number. So it says if 300 is less than 200, so is that true or false? That's false. So basically, if it's false, then it should do nothing. Because the flag one that comes right after here is what it should do when it's true. So in this case, it should do nothing. If I would move to this cell and run my evaluate formula, you can see is 100 less than 200? True. So true, then flag. So it flags. This one is a very simple formula, but just let's try it. Is this times this? Basically, it's 3, 8, 10 multiplied by F3. That's the number in there. And that's our answer. Just to give you a quick glimpse on what you're going to learn in the next section, and to show you how evaluate formula looks on one of these more complex formulas, let me show you something we learned here. This is where we learn to manipulate text, so using some text functions. Don't be afraid by this formula, because you're going to learn how to do it later. I just want to show you how the evaluate formula feature looks here. So you see my end result is quarter. So a bunch of stuff is happening. It says trim right. It's putting the text in there that I'm trimming. And then it's giving me some characters, 16 minus, and then it's len. So it's going to translate that now to a number. So 16 minus 4. Then that's 12 minus length of Jane. 12 minus 4 minus 1, 8 minus 1. 7, end result is this, this. If I make a mistake in this formula, I use the wrong length or I don't make a correction factor, this can help me find that. Don't forget to try it out on your own more complex formulas in your own files. So now it's over to you for an exercise.